Deep in the recesses of time lies a game many believe to be forgotten. Well, apart from some YouTubers covering it in the past, but that's, that's a different story altogether. Today, we're talking about a game of the same name, but very different. Yeah, we're talking about Harry Potter game. Harry Potter, do I even need to do an introduction for it? We all know it, right? Well, if you've been living under a rock and somehow managed to miss out on it, Harry Potter is a pretty damn good book series and made a lot of people, like me, very, very happy for a very long time and introduced many readers to a book series that didn't talk down to them and instead treated them like how they all wanted to be treated. Like a damn wizard. Now, we all know and love the books and most of us enjoy the movies. But can the same be said about the video games? Well, let's find out by, uh, you know, reviewing it. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Now, several people on the internet have made uh, videos about this game, but nearly all of them were focused on the PS1 version of the game, which is, as far as I can tell, a completely different game. I don't know why companies used to do this. There is a PC version of this game, which is completely different. Then the PS1 version, and then the next generation of consoles, which are all also different from the previous two. Why? 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 Just make the game once, damn it! Did we need all these different versions? I know EA wanted to make sure every starry-eyed child and their grandparents could play the game on their calculator, but come on, this is excessive! Anyway, so the game, it basically presumes you know all you need to know about the Harry Potter universe, because the cutscenes don't do a very good job of explaining anything. Come on, Timmy! I know you're only six, but you really expect it to be as easy as just playing the game? You gotta do the background research. Come on, I told you this already. You need to have had an extensive read of the first three books and taken notes throughout the first movie. I mean, come on, don't be lazy, you little punk. If I'm being honest, which if I'm making a review, I probably should be, the game looks better than the PS1 version, which everyone loves to make fun of. It looks pretty good with some nice atmospheric lighting at times, and while the areas aren't accurate to say the movie, it's a good artistic interpretation of the book in many ways, which I like. The movies did a great job of interpreting the world of Harry Potter, but like many, when reading the books before the movies, we all had our own visions and ideas of what characters and places looked like, and this game is like a new interpretation, and I like that. Running around the castle, going up staircases, running to Hagrid's, all of it is super fun. For the first hour or so. <laughs> After that, it gets kind of tedious. Sadly also, the voice acting is uh, pretty atrocious, and the sound design uh, makes my ears bleed. That last one is, was an exaggeration, but you get the point. <laughs> so basically, you run around different levels as Harry, exploring different areas of the castle, collecting items, and working out puzzles. The puzzles often require magic to complete them. You have a wide range of spells and stuff to do all that with, each having different uses like Lumos. And I hope you enjoy hearing the spell's name, because you're going to hear them a lot. None of them are as distinct and clearly different and useful as the way they use them in, say, the LEGO Harry Potter games, but they are still fun to use. Now, what about the collectibles? Well, you collect beans, of course. Now, here's a question. Why are all these early Harry Potter games so obsessed with Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans? Seriously, they aren't brought up that often in the books, but in nearly all the games, they are super heavily used as collectibles and stuff. It's always been weird to me. Okay, so I'm not really the biggest fan of this game. It utilizes the source material in some very creative and interesting ways, sometimes. But for the most part, it's often just a very basic, very clunky and rough, puzzle game with some collective bits. The representation of characters is also rather poor. There is very little character of any kind. It's more like a bunch of models that kind of resemble Ron and Hermione, but all they do is spout one-liners from the books. There's no real growth or even much wit. They're cardboard is what I'm saying. Cardboard! Now you may say character isn't the most important thing in this type of game, but I disagree as this is based on a book where the characters are everything, this game needs to at least have some focus on that. Like, look at Banjo-Kazooie. Let's take on this big boy over here. So many memorable characters because they have defined characteristics that make them memorable. 
Kazooie has a very strong and clear character, which is why she's often more memorable than Banjo. This game has nothing. If this was picked up by someone who knew nothing about the series, there would be no characters to latch onto. I'd be surprised if they actually remembered anyone's names. Except for Harry, because you know, I mean, his, his name's in, his, in the title. The game also has a weird thing of picking and choosing aspects from the book. Take for example the beans, that are literally everywhere. It seems like the people making the game weren't overly familiar with the book. Some parts are spot on, while others are really, really different. It's like the lead director read the first third of the book, skipped a bunch, then read some at the end, tore it up, burnt it a bit, put it through a blender, add some fan fiction to the mix, then read a little more, snapped his fingers and said, ah, now we can make a game out of this. And put it on every console known to man. So to best explain the game, it's more or less a dungeon puzzle collecting thingy where you explore a bunch of labyrinth style areas to solve these puzzles. You use a recently learnt spell or past ones to complete it, and there's often enemies that you will need to defeat to get through, and sometimes there are ones that require a recently learnt spell to defeat. Pretty standard stuff. The game did a pretty alright job of mixing magic in with the gameplay, so that it wasn't just a 3D platformer or a puzzle game with a Harry Potter skin or whatever. But they did a good job in that regard. One of my main uh, gripes with uh, these dungeon areas though, is that they often look the same, which makes the hours of playing this game uh, a, a real struggle, because I had no feeling of progression for a big part of it. Also, the puzzles are often laughable, but I mean, what do you expect? This game falters in every way the book succeeds. It has no characters, no sense of progress, the spells often meld into one and become trivial, and you just feel like it's talking down to you the whole time, which, if the book doesn't do that, then how is it acceptable for the game to do it? Also, this goddamn game takes forever to open every single damn door. There is often a debate in the comments of my videos about the difference between games for kids and games for everyone, and this really does scream E for very young children, which I find to be pretty disappointing and kind of insulting for the first game based on a series that for the first time really treated children and young people well and didn't talk down to them. That's why anyone can go back, read and enjoy the first book. Nothing is just handed to the reader, it's a mystery novel that prides itself on creating a wonderful atmosphere with well-written characters and an incredible world. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the game, captures snippets of that, but can't escape its own simplicity, and in the end kind of gets consumed by it, making it nothing more than a flashy kids game, which is a real shame. Why, hello there, it's me Chester, hello, how are you doing? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that review. Now, if you are new here, welcome! We do a bunch of stuff around here, so please subscribe and follow along. Now, if you are already a subscriber, you may be a little surprised by this video, as you know this channel as being something more or less only focused on Spongebob. But I do have many more interests and hobbies and franchises I love that I want to talk about here, so I hope you don't mind terribly, and I really hope you enjoy some of the other non-Spongebob related content I'll be releasing here. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.